One of the boxes I opened first was the computer box, or hub, as Lego calls it. The hub is the white and blue one. The all blue one is the battery that fits inside the hub. It fits quite easily, as you can see. Next, we unpack the cable that connects our computer hub to our computer. Now, this, you see it's got miniature plug which connects with the computer hub. There's two ways up. Make sure you have the right way up. It looks as though that could be easily damaged if you put it the wrong way in there. That's good. The other end of the cable plugs into the USB port on your computer. Make sure your USB is the right way up. This will help avoid damage. Next, we upgrade the LEGO Robot Inventor Hub's firmware operating system. In the first video in this series, we installed the LEGO Robot Inventor's app. If you have not already installed this, go back and install this app. The next step in this video will be impossible without that app being installed. Next, we start up the Robot Inventor app. Look in the Start menu and it's under Mindstorms. No mention of Lego, which is a bit strange, but it's under Mindstorms. We then click on Start to update the hub operating system and we click Start Update. The update starts and slowly the update comes down to the Robot Inventor Hub. This will take quite some time and we suggest you go away and play a computer game, read a book and much later, much, much later, the Hub operating system will be updated completely. We then click on Done. But the motors also have to be updated. So we click on Update Motors. We've got to add the motors into our computer hub. We put these in the two connections nearest the connection to the computer. We've already got that, so Our robot inventor has four motors, so we connect all of those. And the result looks like this. Next, LEGO wants you to do something with motors A, B, C and D. The letters A, B, C and D are marked on the top of your robot inventor hub, just like this. Now Lego wants us to put some locks on the motor. I'll show you the diagrams that Lego show us and then I'll show you someone actually connecting these. We get one of these pieces, take the blue one, which is two long on one side and one Lego hole on the other. We put those two through as we have shown. We attach a second one of that to that. We obtain the small brown piece like this, put it in the middle. probably not all the way in, like that. We line up those signs on the motor. This is so we can get the zero point on the motor. We then add that lock into the motor and press 
the brown piece in so that it locks the motor so it won't rotate. We now click on done. We have the lock in the motor and you will see that we are now updating motor A. There's an update coming down into motor A from Lego's website on the internet. This is a lot quicker than updating the hub. We remove the lock from motor A because we're going to use it with mo motors B, C and D. Just pull it off like this. And we then attach it to motor B the same way that we did for motor A. We won't go through these B, C and D in detail because it's exactly the same as motor A. You notice this is motor B. <coughs> we add the lock onto motor B. We update motor B the same way we updated motor A. We remove the lock from motor B, we put it on motor C, and we go through the whole process again for updating motor C. We remove the lock from motor C. We attach it to motor D. And go through the same process again. Fortunately, updating each of these motors is much quicker than updating the robot inventor hub itself. Good. So we remove the lock from motor D and we're almost there. We've only got one more thing to be cautious about. Our hub is connected to the internet, but notice the red light. That means the hub needs charging. Now, if we believe comments on the internet, charging your robot inventor hub, having it connected up to your USB port in your computer, could take up to six hours. I did say six hours, that's right. Um, when it's fully charged, the red light will change to green, like this.